that was the most obvious thing for people who uh, first played Tekken 7, who played Miguel formerly. That was, uh, that was like the most alarming stuff. Like, why is this knocking the opponent down? No, I want to keep him standing because I'm able to go back into Savage Stance so I can continue and do crazy stuff. I'm making this video today to kind of briefly describe how should Miguel be played, or rather how, how was Miguel designed to be played? Because uh, I was looking through my comments on the old YouTube video on my Miguel update 3.30, uh, our season 3.30 um, changes, I was looking at one of my comments, and somebody was pretty much saying that, hey, Miguel can be played in more ways than just the way you play aggressive rushdown, heavy mix up. Like he's, you know, he's multifaceted and stuff like that. And my argument was pretty much that I understand that, however, Miguel was originally intended or designed to be played as a string heavy, counter hitting mix up character. Or rather, a character that relies on offensive pressure, on offensive of momentum, on mixing up strings, and being uh, plus frames against an opponent while racking up damage. That's how he said it. That's how he was intended to be played. And, I'm, and it's one thing to say it on a YouTube comment, right? And uh, try and convince someone based on a YouTube comment, but you don't have the game in front of you. So now I actually have Tekken 6 in front of me. So I can kind of show you guys, like I said briefly, um, the differences between this game and Tekken 7 and how, how he was played on this game and contrast that with Tekken 7. He was even worse at poking and keep out than he is in Tekken 7. Now a lot of people like to complain about his range and jabs, uh, stubby, you know what I mean? Um, stuff like that, but imagine Tekken 7 Miguel, but just times 10 worse in terms of stubbiness, general sluggish moves, and just an ineffective range game. This is this is what Miguel has always been known for. It's uh, a lack of good pokes and lack of good strings really outside of Savage Dance. To where his whole design was for you to get in Savage and, and, and so, so that you can, you know, uh, get to work pretty much. So his pokes are so bad, like I said, and his keep out was so bad. Now, here's the thing, it was always like that for Miguel. He always had a hard time getting in, he always had bad strings, he always had bad, well outside of Savage, and he always had horrendous pokes. You know what I mean? That's always been Miguel since his inception, which is in this game, Tekken 6. Now imagine 3-4, right? And so first off, this wasn't natural. Just like pre-season two, Miguel, this wasn't natural. This was super sluggish. Now what was this, 15 frames? 15 frames, not, it's not even a natural combo. And it's punishable at um, minus 10. Punishable at minus 10. And uh, it's not, <laughs> it doesn't do anything. If you Even if you hit him, then it just gives you a knockdown at a weird angle. Very slow, first first hits a high, useless. Only good part about this move was the fact that because it's so slow, and this is why it was actually better than the season two or three change, I'm not sure which season it was, to where they made it a natural combo, to where it was slow, so people would often get hit by that second hit, and then you could do a combo. Like that. I, actually, I don't think you can work on Miguel. There you go. Like that. And so, the move was horrible, and it's not a good poke. Now, Tekken 7, with now it's 13, you can use this as a poke. You can back, back dash, bam. Bam, bam. And then you get free uh, Oki and stuff like that. Worse he was in distance. And I'm, and I'm explaining this for a reason to tell you how much better he was up close. He was, he was a lot more polarized as a character. You have this move, which um, it's even worse on this game because first off, on Tekken 7, this gives you a combo and it gives you a spiral, right? And you can do a combo. Here it doesn't, even if you give him a counter hit. It's actually minus 15, I believe, it's minus 12. Either minus 12 or minus 13, but I'm pretty sure it's minus 12 on Tekken 7. But four, four plus four, two on Tekken 6 was minus 16 to minus 15. So you have a move that, <laughs> this move, and it doesn't show uh, how fast it is, but I'm just gonna assume it's 
uh, what was it, 17 on Tekken 7? I'm assuming it's the same speed. Looks the same speed. So you have a super slow move that's not hit confirmable. That's the easiest, minus 16. This is launch punchable, pretty much. Horrible. Yeah, horrible. This is a launch punchable stream. And you compare it to the Tekken 7 version, uh, you, and you see like, yo, this, you can, as of, as of, as of uh, up until now, from what I've been explaining, you can think that, yo, this is a horrible character, right? Now remember, his strings are already overall worse than Tekken 7, but he also doesn't have the strings that he did have, he has now in Tekken 7. Remember, up four, three, two, two, where he goes like this, and then he does the two hits. Even though you can call it a noob crusher, still on counter hit, that gives you like a 50 something damage combo and you're like plus five or plus three or something. Do your plus five. And it gives you a lot of damage, right? So it's still an option for him to just to throw out a string, you know, to start some offense. Here he doesn't have that. This is all he has is that. Very crappy. It's, you can't do this for anything. It's, you don't even want to use this in a combo because there's better options. Like this, obviously. And um, this is an absolutely useless move. Tekken 7, they did one thing right about at least giving it some extensions. Um, down for 2 2. Now, again, he has just, even if the strings aren't that good, he has it just to be able to throw it out, just to mix up something. Here, he doesn't have that. He has this, which. I'm pretty sure on Tekken 7 you can sidestep that maybe or interrupt him. I'm not sure on this game. But this was nobody used this in this game. This was for a bound, right? That was for bound. You didn't use this for uh you know just for a combo. It, it doesn't do anything, see? So um even for the strings he does have in Tekken 7, which might not be the best, he still had them. Here, he doesn't have anything. Uh, he has a 4 to, up 4 to 1. Now, let's talk about this. First off, this gives you a plus 7 move. This is plus 7. And on Tekken 7, it's plus 3. But the one fatal flaw, as you can see from that red box, is high. Which means, to anybody who knows Miguel, or any competent high level player, they're not getting hit by this. They're just gonna duck that and launch you. And guess what? You think, okay, it's more track, it has more tracking, right? Maybe they'll, you know, maybe it was, it was uh, a trade off they did on Tekka 7 to where they made it mid, but they made it more linear dope. Now, if I go here, and I go to uh, defensive training, and I go command, and I go on that move, right? Where is it? Uh, yeah, right here. Put this on fast. You wanna see how linear this is? First off, look how easy it is for me to duck it. See that? Now look at this. It has absolutely no tracking. Zero tracking. Okay, maybe it's a little good to that side. But you can still sidestep it very easy. See what I mean? See that? It doesn't adjust at all. Look at that. So this move is horrible in high level play. To where again, it gives you plus seven, that's great, but the fact that it's high means you have something that's super slow, super, he's vulnerable while he's in the air, and is high. So you couldn't even rely on that. Oh, four for a two mix up. Now, and I'm just talking about his pokes to where, look, you can't even get in with that. You, you can't use this like Tekken 7. First off, he doesn't have the two ender on him. He just has that. And you know what else makes this horrible? Just the fact that this move is minus 14, I believe. This move is minus 14. So now, remember on Tekken 7, this is definitely safe. I'm not sure how minus it is. It's like minus 7 or something. It's minus 5. Yeah, it's minus 5. Minus five or minus four, but it's minus five on Tekken Seven, and it has a lot of pushback, which means you can bait out a move after that on Tekken Seven. It's great on block if they don't duck. Now you would think, okay, shouldn't wouldn't they be able to duck here, right? But actually, it does jail on here. That's one good thing about it is that it does jail, and is delayable. But the problem with this is once you delay it, 
then it doesn't gel anymore. So they can they can duck once you delay it. And also, um, so once you do that, and, and remember, the so only mix up is are you going to finish it? Are you going to do that? Or are you going to do this? But the problem is this is minus thirteen, and so the fact that I can't. Uh, it doesn't gel when I delay it means that most likely if I'm looking to fish for a counter here, I'm looking to get in, I'm gonna do the full thing. And so that's the easiest minus 14 punish after blocking it. So there's some benefits and drawbacks compared to the Tekken 7 version, but overall it's bad because there's less options you can do. I can't mix it up with 4422. So his range pokes were just garbage, garbage, you know? Oh, also, and I already talked about this before, but no shoulder tackle. So I can't get in with doing a shoulder tackle to where if I hit him, it's great. If it if he blocks it, I'm safe, right? I can't get in with that. Um, again, no 4-4-3, because these are two things that are added on tag two. No 4-4-3 to where I can look for a whiff and then do it, and then it's a chunky hit, leads to a combo, right? Nope. I have no 4-4-3, four, four, I, no four, four, I have no shoulder tackle. I have only this, and so which means I have to use stuff like this, right? But on Tekken 7, that's minus 12 when you hit uh, up close, right? Or when you, when the um, soonest, when the nearest active frame hits, that's minus 12. So this is minus 12, yeah, minus 12, the same thing as Tekken 7, minus 12. So what am I gonna do to get in? See what I'm saying? I say all this because, and let me continue. This is the reason why his movement was so good. This is the reason why Miguel's movement was always top notch. You know what I mean? Why he, he has such great movement, great sidestep, great movement. Because if he didn't have that, how would he even be able to function as a Tekken player, a Tekken fighter? He needs to have good movement in order to maneuver his way inside in order to begin his offense. Because you could not rely on his outside stuff. They were always crappy. This is nothing new for Miguel. And so you have to have good movement to get in, to look for a whiff, and to get in and begin your offense with that, and to savage stance, right? That's how that's how Miguel's supposed to be played, or how he was designed to be played based on the properties of his move. You know, you couldn't even do instant savage moves in Tekken 6, to where you can't just instantly go and do and go, bam, bam. Now this is the fastest I can do this. You see that? That was the fastest I can go into a Savage, into a down back three. That much delay. Let me do Savage two. Fast as I can do it. Let me do Savage up four three. Fast as I can do it. So there's no way I can be like this, be like this, seal whiff, and then, because it's so slow. So doing an instant Savage uh, in open space wasn't even a thing in this game. Unlike it is Tekken 7 now that they made that pretty much instant in, term, in terms of a savage transition into a savage move. So you had to get up close and and get into a savage from a string. You know what I mean? Like it's a one it's a it's a one way track to a certain play style of getting inside and bobbing your opponent. You couldn't just go out here. I already talked about the strings he did, the strings he has to where it's just very ineffective in comparison to new iterations. But you couldn't even do, couldn't even do a instant savage, because it's, it's literally that slow. It's not me, my error is literally that slow. This is also a reason. Not only his movement good, and remember this is bolstered by the fact that movement is better on this game. How easy I can backdash. See how much, see how much uh, space, see how much distance I cover with backdash. Movement was better in the past second games, which benefited Miguel more so than other characters because he already had better movement than most of the cast. So with good movement, I can get in how I need to get in, then get in, right? <laughs> if that makes sense. So this is also the reason why down forward one was zero on block. To where once I hit this, then this meant that you really didn't know what a Miguel player was going to do after this move. Any follow-up option was effective. If I'm zero on block, I sidestep, that's way more effective than being minus two on block, right? If I'm zero on mock and I do this, then you have to respond with a 10 frame or, you, or else you're gonna get counter hit it. So this meant that it was, regardless of a blocker on hit, we're, we're <laughs> it's, you know, it's game on pretty much. 
I hit you on plus five. You block, I'm just zero, and then it's you know, it's whoever whoever makes the best option. So this is why down for one was so damn good because his moves were so damn bad out here. So he needed good space and good space and good space and get in, boom. Now if you look at back one four, this move was a lot better on this game than the other game. The thing about this is that when you uh, once it's a counter hit, then it's a full combo. Given that they don't wiggle out of the command or the wiggle out of the stun, they can press uh, back forth, back forth, back forth, back forth really fast to wiggle out of that. But if they don't do that, which it's possible that they won't do that in the heat of battle, right? Then you get a full combo. See, you get a full combo. Pretty much. And so that means this move was so much better. And think about one thing. The moves, you'll notice the trend that Miguel's moves on counter hit, they either uh, leave them standing but plus frames, or they uh, give them a stun to a full combo. They never knock them down. On Tekken 7, all these moves knock them, knock them down or give a wall splat or something, which is counterintuitive to Miguel's gameplay. His original gameplay on Tekken 6. Because remember, on Tekken 7, this move knocks... Tekken 7, uh, the move knocks down, right? It it makes him, you know, go flying and it knocks him down. Outside of Miguel's range, thus resetting the field. But here, it gives him a full combo. Miguel always was, was supposed to get, uh, like, the best reward for counter-hitting an opponent. He's a counter-hitting character. You know what I mean? You're supposed to pay attention to frames and counter hit him to get a big combo. So either it left him standing or it counter hit the opponent. That was always Miguel's gameplay. So that's the difference between that. That's why that's so much better than Tekken 7 because it gives a full combo given that they don't wiggle out of the stun. This move right here, back one. This is plus one on Tekken 7. On this game, this is plus three, which means a strategy of just doing this on hit and then doing that are doing this and then that. That's a lot more viable in this game than in uh, Tekken 7, being that this is only plus one. So all three of the moves uh, was viable, right? And, and let's talk about the third option in terms of this. We'll talk about that. But yeah, let me finish off on this. All three of these moves were, about, were valid, you know? His savage stuff in general was just more scarier since I was plus three, like I said. This move, well, we already know about this move. This move still kind of, uh, I mean, the thing about this is that this is a lot better on this game than in previous games, or in Tekken 7, my bad. Because on the surface level, it sucks because even if it's uh, on a counter hit, even if it's on a counter hit or a normal hit, it doesn't, uh, it's, it doesn't turn into a natural combo on normal hit or counter hit and it's launch punishable but the thing is on this game on a normal hit it's a full combo it's a full combo you know what I mean? it's a full combo which means and if you've seen my style of gameplay you know that if you're a miguel player you mix up correctly you do this stuff you do that stuff and then you do this once in a blue moon, then you'll hit people, even on Tekken 7. Well, on Tekken 7, all you get is that. That's all you get, right? But this game's a full freaking combo, and that's pretty cheap, honestly, for this game. And not, nobody's saying this game is balanced, but you still got a lot of reward for doing stuff like this, and that's a trend with Savage Stance. Savage Stance had a lot of broken stuff in there. A lot of very good reward stuff. It contrasted with how horrendous and abysmal his game, his offense and gameplay was out in this range. But once he gets close, he gets Savage Stance, then he can go to work. So Savage up 4-3, where you know about that? That's a full combo. Now it is minus 11, so it's punishable, but that's a full combo. That's a stun, that's a full combo. It's minus, it's uh, 15 frames fast, just like Tekken 7. But again, am I going low? Am I going low? Am I going here? And if I get a good read, you're in business, you know? And contrast that with Tekken 7, you do this and then it knocks them back, right? 
and it's extremely hard to get a follow up this right so pretty much you just get that move they go out of your range and then the game is reset <laughs> which is again counterintuitive to where miguel wants to place the opponent on this game you'll notice he's rewarded for every time he makes a good decision i make a good decision i get a full freaking combo i can turn the match around you know what i mean let's see um another thing is sav one one on this game this knocks them down again <laughs> Tech 7 a lot of some knocks down, right? On this game, it doesn't knock them down. It, it leaves them standing, but it, he's plus three. So he can go bam, bam, and then bam. Bam, 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 bam. You know what I mean? It's still continuing. That's the thing about Miguel, who's always momentum in a snowballing offense. I was always being. On this game, on Tekken 7, it knocks down. Then you can get stuff like that. But, you know, um, again, it's just a reset. And and again you get a counter hit you're rewarded with a full combo this isn't by mistake this is how he was designed i mean it, you can delay it just like tekken 7 but remember you get a counter hit on a second hit just the same way as tekken 7. so normally this is encapsulates miguel's offense really it's standing but plus frames or if you get a good read it's a counter hit then it's a full combo it never just knocked opponents back like tekken 7 like that's it's just bad design. This is bad uh, designing, bad character altering, in my opinion, for Tekken 7. You didn't even see that stuff in Tag 2. That was only Tekken 7 when they, when whoever was developing this character, they just didn't understand how he's supposed to be played. And really, that's just what I want to say, really. Most of the other stuff is the same, but the key stuff, bam. Oh, obviously you have this where season three that was changed but that's again gets you plus five and here's another thing tekken seven this knocks you down of course if you're super savvy and stuff you can get that but that's super hard right most of the time you're just going to get that and then you'll get a you know you get a little down uh grounded hit but on this game even on counter it didn't knock you down that's like that was the most obvious thing for people who uh first played tekken seven who played miguel formerly that was, uh, that was like the most alarming stuff. Like, why is this knocking the opponent down? No, I want to keep him standing because I'm able to go back into Savage Stance so I can continue and do crazy stuff. Especially when you have options like he has in this game to where bam, 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 and that second hit uh, is a full combo, right? Or I have this plus five that comes out in 15 frames. You do a jab or you do something slower, then that's a full combo. Then I'm super deadly up close. This is how Miguel's supposed to be played. And this is the conclusion, really. I'm super deadly up close in Savage Stance. And that's my whole game is just getting into the opponent, getting into the opponent, sidestep with a move, and then start my Savage stuff. That's my whole game plan in Tekken uh, 6. This is how he was designed, you know? But um, again, most of those moves I just described, especially in Savage Chant, they knock them down. Obviously, you have this, bam, bam, they knock them back. Bam, they knock them back. Towards just like, why do I even want to, why do I want that, <laughs> that response to a move, you know what I mean? When I want to keep them up close. Doesn't make any sense, right? So, again, um, even had little things like this, you could charge this, right? It was, Savage Chance was just so deadly in this in this game, you know, but he was so horrible <laughs> out, outside in this range And that was the that was the polarizing dynamic that this game had and that's what made Miguel interesting Not just Miguel, but many other characters in this roster uh, For this game they were I wouldn't say one-trick ponies, but they were um, They had a certain game design. They had a certain way to play, you know Characters felt more different in this game. That's what people are complaining with, about with Tekken 7, Season 3 and on. Just like everybody feels samey. That's what people say. They feel the same. You know, they have a down for one, they have a hop kick, they have an orbital, you look at Leroy, you look at, you know what I mean? They either feel super cheap like new characters, which gives off a pay to win uh, vibe, you know? Or they all just have the same stuff, right? And so it feels like you're kind of playing the same character. You know what I mean? Especially you play characters like Ka Kazumi, Dragunov. You know what I mean? It's just like, what's... 
you know, they all poke, they have good movement, they have great strings. It's just like, and Miguel's added to that list of just like, that's what people say, when I, cause I pay attention to that. People say like, you know, Miguel just feels like he's just there. He's just, you know, just a character, he's not really interesting. And I would actually have to agree with him somewhat because he's made a lot less interesting in Tekken 7. On this game, he's way more interesting, you know? Especially in the uh, environment of this game with with uh, Miguel, Leo, Bob, all these being new characters that are new and fresh, you know? So it, it was just such a, it was just such a um, better game design, let me just say that, in my opinion, for this character. Than how he's played in Tekken 7, because he just feels like a, a jumbled mess, a mess of of conflicting frames, conflicting, um, you know, conflicting hitboxes. It just feels like a mess in Tekken 7. I mean, and I've honestly felt that since the game came out. They did some good things with Tekken 7, especially in season two. They did some really good things with stuff like this move, the counter. They did some good stuff, but he just. He conflicts with his own gameplay too much to where he doesn't feel interesting, you know? Uh, obviously, we love Miguel. If you're watching the channel, we we're like, we're Miguel mains. We like Miguel, all right? So we're living our own little uh, microcosm, right? And then we have a, a, a we have a form of bias, but to an outsider, like, does he look as, you know what I'm saying? Does he look as unique as this game? Like, come on. But that's all I want to say, really. Um, you know, comment. Tell me what you think. And that's just my analysis. It's like Miguel, based on his moves and his properties, was supposed to be played as that type of character. So yeah, tell me what you think, and I'll see you guys later.